Hello YouTube and welcome back to episode 3 of the PowerBook G4 series. In this episode, we are finally going to be installing Tiger on the dedicated Tiger partition on the PowerBook. Obviously, we have Leopard which is up and running and if we go to about this Mac, we'll see that it's on 10.5.8 with our 1.33 gigahertz G4 processor and our 768 megabytes of DDR RAM. But of course, this is only one of the installations. And the point of today's video is to actually install Tiger. Now, if you saw the first episode of the iMac series, you know that we already made a Tiger installer on the Seagate hard drive. So in order to take advantage of it, we're going to be using it to install Tiger on the PowerBook using good old Firewire. So let's get started. If you saw the first episode of the PowerBook G4 series, you know that the official installation disk of Leopard that I tried to use kept having issues. So I had to install 10.3 Panther, I believe. And fortunately, I was able to upgrade using the same disk. And while it is nice to have a official installation disk, this time it should be a little bit easier and hopefully a little bit faster because we are using Firewire and we have a direct copy of the ISO of an installation DVD for Tiger. So hopefully this time we'll run into less issues, but it being old Mac OS, anything can really happen. So to begin, we first have to restart the PowerBook. And while it's restarting and the hard drive is making a whole bunch of noise, we have to hold down the option key so that way we can select the hard drive as the main bootable drive to get into the Tiger installer. And now we are at the drive selection screen and if we wait a second we should hopefully get the Tiger installer. And of course it seems like I spoke too soon because it does not want to show up as a bootable drive. That was the same problem we were having in the iMac G3 episode because this drive did not want to show up as a bootable drive, even though it clearly shows a macOS installer. So to get around this, we're going to be using the same restore disks to install 10.3 Panther, and then from Panther we'll upgrade to Tiger. It's the same thing we did with the current Leopard installation, but instead of going to Tiger, we went directly from Panther to Leopard. The recovery disk is in the PowerBook, and once we restart, we will be able to start the installation on the Mac OS X Tiger partition. So now we're at the installer screen for Mac OS Panther. Now, this is the second time we've installed Panther on this machine, or at least it will be, but in the end we won't actually be using this because we're using Leopard and then we will upgrade this version to Tiger. And before we continue, it'll probably be a good idea to unplug the drive from the computer, so that way we don't accidentally rewrite the Tiger installer. So here we can select the Tiger partition and it will take 2.6 gigabytes but we do have enough space on there and we can go into options it will just install Mac OS so we can click OK hit continue and we begin the installation and of course I just had to completely skip the customize button and all of the language and printer drivers began to install so now we have to do it again. And before we actually select it, we should probably repartition this because it began to install files on there. So first we should probably open disk utility and reconfigure the Tiger partition. So here we have the Tiger partition and if we go into erase, we can simply just click erase and it will have the same name and it's the same volume format, but we just have to erase it again because it began to install when I did not configure it. So now the capacity is the full capacity and if we exit disk utility, we can select the partition again, options, install Mac OS. This time we click continue and customize and now we can begin the installation.
And here we are. Now here we are actually at the setup screen for Panther and we do not have a Mac to transfer information from. Continue, continue, don't create an Apple ID. There is actually a way to bypass the registration information screen and all you have to do is press Command Q and you'll be prompted with this. And you just have to click skip and here you can actually make the user account. So for the account name, we will just call it Tiger because that is what the actual installation will be. And I will not be putting a password. But for the pictures, we do have a wide selection and I'll probably just go with the cactus, which is what I also use on my Mojave installation and pretty much any other macOS installation. But it's pretty cool to see that Panther and Mojave have the same profile picture. Now we have the date and time, which seems to be automatic. And of course we will not be registering because this is macOS Panther. And here we are. When we upgrade to Tiger, it actually looks closer to Panther than Leopard. Leopard was a pretty big change because they changed a lot of things, like even just the system preferences icon, which used to be this light switch, is now a different icon in Leopard. And also we have just different design elements throughout. And if we go into Finder, we also have the brushed aluminum, which looks really cool for the OS, but it is definitely different when compared to Leopard. But if we go to About This Mac, we have 10.3.4. And of course we have the same processor and memory because we did not change anything about that. But this is copyright 2004, which is also the same date on the actual disc. So like in the first episode of the PowerBook series, we're going to be abandoning Panther again because we will be upgrading to Tiger. Now that we have an actual installation on the Tiger partition, it's time to plug in the FireWire drive again. And now we can upgrade to Tiger. So here we have the installer and this should hopefully just run and cannot be used from this disc. Well, this is not going to work. So I took the time to put the same copy of macOS onto a USB drive, and it does recognize that it's an installer, like it did with the Seagate drive, but hopefully this time it will actually run. And it actually works! So I have no idea why the Seagate hard drive did not work at all. Maybe it was in the way that it was partitioned, it did not read it properly. It did say it wasn't able to use it, but I have no idea why, because it seems to register that it's an installer. But anyways, let's actually restart so we can begin the installation of macOS Tiger. Okay, so for some reason it restarted and it just went back into Panther. It did not do anything after that. I'm not sure why, but it was a step farther than the actual hard drive. But we are in disk utility right now because we're going to do a couple of things. We are going to restore the hard drive so that way it's not an actual installer. Rather, it'll just be used as a normal hard drive and we can actually put files on it. And the other thing we'll do is I have a 32 gigabyte USB flash drive and this one is pre-partitioned to have several installations, but it doesn't have any actual installations yet. It's just been partitioned. But what we'll do is we'll take the macOS installer We'll put it onto this drive and we'll see if we have more luck with this because if we do then we'll be able to use this with not just the PowerBook but with future machines as well. We'll erase the Seagate hard drive and it should be fairly quick because there is almost nothing on the drive apart from the installer and that didn't work at all so it doesn't really matter. But now we have the hard drive which has been wiped. So I'm not sure why, but it's becoming more and more difficult to actually do this. For some reason, the hard drive had lost the file somehow, so I had to recopy it. And even when I did try to image the partition on the USB drive, it doesn't want to select it. It's grayed out and I can't do anything about it. So this time we'll try and launch the ISO image from the hard drive itself and see if it'll work. So we do get this screen again, but will it actually boot into the installer? We'll have to wait and see. 
and we're booting back into Panther. I'm going to try and install this again by transferring the ISO image directly onto the PowerBook instead of trying to use the external hard drive because then we might have a better chance of it succeeding but even if it fails after that we'll just have to try something else. So we do get the same screen but this time if it actually does restart we should hopefully go into the Tiger installer. And of course it did not work. Now maybe this is a macOS Panther type of thing but I am just not having any luck with this. So we are actually getting somewhere now because the installer did actually work. It transferred over to the USB drive that we partitioned earlier and all we had to do was just take the installer, add it to the destination here, take the ISO file, put it as the source and then click restore. Now I already did that so we have a functional installer now and hopefully once we restart the system and hold down the option key we'll see it as an installer. If not I may have to tweak something so that way it will recognize the USB drive while it's booting but hopefully it'll work without that so let's actually try it out now. And there it is it actually does show up now. And now we're at the actual setup. So the USB drive was on the left side of the PowerBook and I did restart the system because I'm pretty sure this is a slower USB bus. So I put it on the right side and it opened up much faster when compared to the other one. But now we can continue with the setup and hopefully it should be pretty fast. And before we continue we should probably open up Disk Utility to wipe the Tiger installation. And we'll just go into Erase leave it as is but click on erase and now we'll have a fresh partition for our tiger installation so now that it's completely erased we will exit disk utility and then continue so we'll be using the tiger installation we'll check out options real quick and yep it's going to install mac os then we'll Go ahead and continue, but before we click install, we'll customize it. We'll get rid of the fonts, the language translations, and the printer drivers. And after that, we'll just click on install. actually done it we're at the tiger setup screen now so let's actually begin and set up tiger so we don't have any other information that is the correct keyboard and just like the panther installation we'll do command Q to skip this because we are not going to register this but we will name the account name tiger the date and time will appear to be correct so we'll just continue and don't forget to register <laughs> We'll just click on done and I will have to update this all connected to the internet and software update will actually work on this because Apple does still support it. But as you can see, it does look similar to Panther, but Tiger has a lot more support because it was just a more popular OS and a lot more support is definitely handy to have. But the cool part is that it's not Leopard because we also have this different design language. So it's nice to have both Tiger and Leopard on the same machine because they both have their advantages. And here is about this Mac. So the version I have is 10.4, which is the initial release. The latest version of Tiger is 10.4.11. So we do have several updates to catch up to. And I'm pretty sure that's why it won't connect to my internet as of right now because it only has WEP. And of course that is not a modern encryption method for internet now. So I'll probably directly hook this up to ethernet, see if that'll work, and then we'll run software update which will actually help us update because it still works. 
So I've connected a Ethernet cable to the PowerBook and if we run software update, it does say that it is checking, so it does have a connection. And there are the updates. So this is going to update us to 10.4.11 directly with the combined update. And then we also have some Java updates as well as a DVD player update. As we saw, we are on 10.4 directly, but it is nice to know that the installer itself is 10.4. So in case I ever want to run the initial release of Tiger or update to a slightly newer version, but not 10.4.11, it's nice to have that. So I'll go ahead and install the updates and hopefully after the combined update is installed, we will actually be able to connect to the wireless because I believe the newer versions of Tiger do have support for newer networking. So it is now on 10.4.11, it has successfully updated, and there are still a couple more updates to get through. This is the second round of updates I have through software update. And so now we'll just have to install these, restart, and see if there are any more that'll pop up. And software update does have another update, which is a Java one, and we don't have to restart, but after this will install, I'll double check to see if there are any more. Otherwise, Everything will be fully up to date on this Tiger installation. And there we have it. Our software is now up to date. So software update did its job. And now we have a fully updated version of Tiger running on the PowerBook. This video is probably more time consuming than it should have been because if we just messed around with this a little bit more and got it working the first time, we would have had Tiger up and running long ago. But by messing with the reinstallation disks, it just caused more issues because I tried to use the ISO in an incorrect way and it just did not end up working. But at least we do have Tiger and Leopard on the PowerBook. That's gonna be it for this episode. In the next one, we'll mess around more with the Tiger installation, we'll install some programs, and we'll see what we can do with it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, then be sure to stay tuned for more, and as always, thanks for watching.